Now, is it just me, or does it look like Seagate is getting its design inspiration from the Jawas? Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I'm going to be giving my one month uh, impressions on using the Seagate One Touch Drive. This is actually not the drive, this is a box. The drive is actually over there. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I'm not gonna be doing just the, you know, unboxing things that you might see on reviews. We're gonna go straight to what you wanna see, which is an ad from a sponsor. Good thing I don't have any sponsors, so no ads. Let's go straight to the speed test, which is what I'm guessing most uh, users, like myself, really care about. So let's begin. Five, four, three, two, one. And don't you worry, I will go ahead and show you all the accessories that you get with this drive and also you know how long all the cables are. Uh, but to show you my setup for the speed test, I'm gonna be using a MacBook that does have three USB-C ports, which are uh, Thunderbolt speed ports. However, though, we are going to be limited with the USB-A cable that comes with this drive. So it has a USB-A, which is kind of weird for 2023, uh, but you know, at least it has USB 3.0 uh, speed so that's still good especially for a spinning drive and then we're gonna be using the Apple USB a to USB C converter right there and let's we'll plug it into the Mac so you can double click this but eventually it will launch its own program which I've used for encryption more about this later in the video but I recommend if you are gonna put any like sensitive data on here or anything that's just you know personal I do recommend encrypting your drive and it does have obviously its own software suite for that so I'm gonna go ahead and unlock the drive for you and it only took a few seconds for it to unlock right now as you can see I have used about two terabytes already and what I'm going to do is in other videos I've compared like the um, Crucial SSD as well as the Samsung and the SanDisk SSD. I've been using this Yosemite Arizona folder. This, if I get the info, is about a 50, you can see that, it's about a 50 gigabyte folder. So what I'm going to do is take this folder and I'm just gonna drag it and drop it into the Seagate hub. And we're gonna measure about how long it takes to transfer this folder. Now, don't be alarmed by the initial estimate. It says seven minutes, but it's gonna breeze through this. Okay, so while this is still copying, I'm gonna take the lapel mic uh, from here and move it over to the hub, just so that you can hear how loud this drive is while it's copying. It's actually really quiet. In fact, I could hear still louder the traffic from outside than I can this drive. So it is a very quiet drive, even while it's speeding through this copy. Okay, so while it's still copying, you know, keep in mind that it's not going to be as fast as these solid state uh, SSDs are. So if you really want the fastest uh, transfer read or write speeds, especially if you're recording, say, video straight from the camera or if you want to be able to like video edit, using something like this will give you, of course, way faster transfer speeds than this. But this is great for, you know, archiving projects. Uh, this is gonna be, you know, a great scenario if you have just a lot of large files that you want just as a backup, a safe backup to be able to retrieve once in a while. If you use something every single day and every hour of the day for work, this is where you're gonna get a much better speed. And of course, you're also gonna pay a lot more per terabyte like this when I bought it uh, was about $100 for one terabyte. And for about the same price, I'm getting eight terabytes of hard drive space. So one terabyte solid state versus eight terabytes of hard drive. Well, you do the math right there. Great value out of this Seagate. But of course, it's still, still copying. So this is one where you wanna let it go, get some coffee and come back. All right. Not a bad idea, we'll get some coffee here. Uh, so this drive has a two year 
Looks like limited warranty up to three years, depending on which part of the world that you're in. So there's that map right there if you wanted to reference that. Uh, these drives by Seagate are made in, it's probably gonna be Thailand, I bet. Uh, let's see, a lot of these drives are. And in fact, there's actually a great video if you want to uh, watch it, it's on YouTube. It's just how hard drives are made. Uh, it's funny, they don't tell you the brand of drive until the very end and you actually can see a Western Digital logo. All right, there it goes. So it finished that 50 gigabyte folder in about six minutes. So if you do the math, that's about one minute and 20 seconds for each 10 gigabytes. It's actually pretty fast um, for a hard drive. Uh, I've had other drives such as, uh, let me pull this out, uh, such as this um, Lacey or Lassie. Can't really see the brand on here. Oh, there it goes. Which coincidentally is also made by Seagate. It's a Seagate brand. Uh, the other hard drive that I have also is a Toshiba drive. And this one's actually considerably slower than um, the Lacey and the Seagate. So for speed, I think the Seagate still is the fastest, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer the same 50 gigabyte file using the Lacey drive. Now, this thing was made, or at least it was bought in 2017. So this drive is already six years old. Uh, let's see how the speed stacks up between this brand new Seagate eight terabyte versus the one terabyte uh, Lacey drive from 2017. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eject the Seagate hub. Unplug it, and I'm gonna use the exact same port, the exact same adapter for this Lacey Porsche drive. So like we did before, we're gonna take that same 49 gigabyte folder and drop it into the Lassie drive and use the stopwatch to track how long it takes. All right, so while the Lassie drive is transferring, this is the Seagate hub and it comes with uh, these connections in the back. So it's a barrel type of DC uh, plug and it does come with the adapter. I'll show you how long that adapter is. And also has the USB-B type of connection, which is the same type of connection that, you know, these drives have had for a very, very, very long time. I was kind of hoping that this would have a C to C because it is 2023 right now. No, I did not rhyme on purpose. Uh, and then on the front though, this is actually kind of nice. Uh, out of that DC input, it could actually give you some outputs, which is why I guess they call this a hub, uh, is that you could actually use um, the USB-C and the USB-A port to not only charge, but I found that you could also use this to actually connect drives uh, to whatever computer it's hooked up to. So it actually is a uh, data transfer port through the front as well. So it's pretty cool that you don't need uh, one of those uh, like hubs like this, especially if all you need is to like, you know, go to one USB-A, sorry, USB-A or USB-C instead of having to buy a hub like this. So now we have just this one Seagate hub literally being a hub. So we have a hard drive, our solid state flash drive, USB-A, USB-C, that all goes through just this one connection into your computer, especially if you're limited on ports or if you just don't wanna see that many cables. This is a very clean setup and I have access to not only the Seagate hub, but I can also access my La C drive as well as that SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. So very convenient to have. And this is not that heavy. Uh, it's kind of funny, I looked in here I'm not sure you can see, it looks a little crinkled back there. So, and even right there, that foil, I was like, the hell is this drive damaged already? Uh, but maybe that uh, crinkling is the way that the foil or the heat sink is supposed to look like. I don't know, but um, I trust the professionals. Maybe they know what they're doing. Obviously they've been making these drives for a very long time. Uh, the, this drive is made in Thailand. Probably can't even read that. Uh, and that's pretty typical. So I think a lot of the good drives are made in Thailand. Uh, so you'll probably see Western Digital Drives, uh, which is their competing brand, basically made in Thailand also. So it could just be the same factory making all of these uh, for them. And this Lacey Drive is also made in Thailand. 
although it has like this whole like France label on there because it's a French design drive that's made in Thailand. All right, so the good and the bad. The good news is that the cable that comes with this is like a one meter long uh, USB-B. Again, this is the part that goes into the hard drive to a USB-A. This is the bad. I mean, I don't think there's as many products right now that support USB-A. So if you do have, say, like a new MacBook, you have to use that little dongle to convert that. I really wish that they would have packaged this with a USB-C to C or at least a USB-B to C, but that is their decision. And then you also get, of course, that DC adapter, which is really long as well. Okay, so if the USB-A plug was the bad, let me show you the ugly. So what comes with this Seagate hub is this, a big, this huge <laughs> block that's probably gonna take up one, two, three different spots if you use a power strip. So let's see, what else is in this box? Here's this other massive cardboard box that housed that adapter that we just saw earlier. Oh yeah. And if you do live in other countries around the world, they actually box all these different adapters for you. Check this out. So if you're traveling, you could bring your eight terabyte brick hub hard drive with you because who doesn't travel with their eight terabyte hard drive? Yeah, like I think this is kind of a waste. I really wish that I would have gotten a USB-C cable instead of all these adapters. Um, yeah, really strange move by uh, Seagate on this one, unless if they really just want to box this one hard drive and literally send it to the entire world without having to repackage. Sorry, I was talking so much about this block, I forgot to see that the test actually finished. So the Lacey drive looks like it finished its transfer at seven minutes and 40 seconds. So a full minute and about a half longer than the Seagate. So if you're talking about speed alone, then the Seagate wins the speed test between the two. And now in what should be the most important test, we're gonna do the read speed from the drive. And to do this, we're going to take that same Yosemite folder and copy it from the Seagate hub and put it into a folder on the MacBook. Okay, so the drive has completed transferring over half that file to the Mac and it's done it within two minutes and like 30 seconds. So it's already actually exceeding its write time, which is good because I think in most um, use cases that we're typically going to read from the drive more often than we write from. So good to see and I can't wait to see what the final results are. And no, I'm not being sponsored by Seagate. I just want this to be fast because it's for my own good. I use this drive. At about four minutes and 45 seconds, the free test is done. And this yields us actually a faster read speed over the write speed at about 171 megabits per second. Pretty good for this drive. All right, so what are my final thoughts about the CK drive? Well, just to summarize my experience, I mean, I've used drives such as floppy drives over the years. CDRWs, remember these things? And then of course I've used flash drives, solid state external drives, hard drives. Out of all these experiences, I will say that I'm really pleased and happy to be able to use this Seagate Drive 1 because eight terabytes, way more storage than what this thing ever was able to do, uh, obviously. And the speed's actually really, really fast for what it is. And because the brand is Seagate and it's been made in Thailand, I know that I should be able to get a pretty good drive uh, for many years, fingers crossed. Um, and then knowing that it came from Costco, you know, I know, I know that they've got my back uh, on this one. Price point is fantastic, less than $20 
per terabyte even if you get this thing at its regular price and you could get even a better deal if Costco or other retailers sell this drive for less. I also like that I could use it as a uh, charging hub so I don't have to have as many cables uh, on my desk. I could just plug in uh, when I need to charge something or even to connect something to my computer and I don't have a USB-A port readily available. You get the USB-A um, port right in the front of this drive. Wait, can you see this? Wait. Fast data saves for Microsoft QBasic. <laughs> Fast data. It was actually this pretty cool video on YouTube I could pull up. Um, it's um, how hard drives are made. Let's see how. Yeah, oh, sorry. How external hard drives are made. It's produced from the Science Channel. Pretty cool video. Uh, so it just shows hey, like. Uh, got a second? I'm going to show you how I got. No, I don't have a second. Let me skip that. Uh, now that you've seen what the performance and some of the features and the accessories that come with the Seagate are, I'm going to show you now how to set up the encryption, which is a huge feature uh, for these drives. Uh, so you open up the installer for whichever uh, platform you use, Mac or the uh, Windows side. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip the sign up because uh, I really don't need this uh, service. Uh, but I'm going to go to consolidate data. I'm uh, not really consolidating anything, but I do want access to download the zip. A file which will go into your downloads and then you can um, install the Seagate toolkit. Oh yeah, by the way, there's my resume if any of you guys are looking for maybe sponsoring me. <clears throat> anyway, open up the installer and from here we will go ahead and allow that access. Uh, of course, like all things, you kind of have to agree to the legal stuff. Now we're going to actually download the toolkits. I still get anxiety sometimes from the good old 56k modem days. Thankfully, that's going to download pretty fast. Sweet. Now that we have this installed, we have now this toolkit that will actually pop up in your menu bar uh, every time that you uh, plug your drive in. Initially, we are going to get this welcome screen. Perfect. Yep. Got it. And we uh, yep, will allow access to the drive. We'll let it do its thing for a little bit. Okay, I thought I just clicked that, but whatever. I got it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just select no... Uh, for whatever automatic step it wants to do. Don't need automation. Okay, so now that we have the OneTouch um, toolkit, we do want to set up the secure part of the drive, which will encrypt it. Uh, apparently, we have to eject the drive first. Okay, so we're going to eject the drive so that you can install the driver. Still waiting for, I think it's for me to eject the uh, drive. Now it's going to install. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because if you are a Mac user, you're going to have to enable system extensions, which typically are blocked. Uh, so you're going to go into system settings, uh, which will just open itself up. And you want to um, enable the system extensions. Now, before that happens, though, uh, you will have to, of course, sign in. But you're going to want to go into the recovery mode of your Mac. Uh, this is where you might want to reference uh, some resources, uh, especially from the internet. Uh, but if you have an M1, I'm just going to hold down the power button until you get the startup options. So once you're there, you will go ahead and just select options. You will have to actually sign in. So I'm not going to show that part because it's my password. Uh, but once you're in, you don't need to select any of these options. Instead, just go to the top menu bar under Utilities and go to Startup security utility. From here, we will unlock it. Again, you'll enter a password. Select the security policy. And once you're in, uh, you might, if you haven't already, need to go to reduced security, which I know is going to be anxiety inducing for some of you all. Uh, but you are just allowing yourself uh, as the user to manage the kernel extensions from identify developers. And in this case, it's going to be Seagate. So you're going to choose uh, those kernel extensions to be enabled. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had to do this myself twice until the toolkit app decided it actually wanted to work. Uh, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it the first time. Once it does work, you'll enter in your SID, which is a piece of paper that came with your uh, box. So don't throw away the paperwork, which we typically do, right? You'll need it to input that SID. Then you can create a password to secure your drive. Uh, once you create that, you could also create a password reset key. And you do need to agree that Seagate or Lussie cannot help you reset your password because obvious reasons. 
Uh, it doesn't take that long for the drive to now encrypt itself. And from here, it'll automatically pop up the um, prompt for a password every time that you connect your Seagate hub. All right, folks, if you, um, again, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, uh, please feel free to comment if you have any questions, um, difference in maybe experiences that you like to share with other users, uh, or if you just want to give a shout out. All right, folks, have a good one, safe storage, and um, yeah, see you for another one.